Hello! Thank you for clicking that link and joining me again today. I am so glad you did. My name is Dee. I am Fat Chick in a Barn. And today we are going to talk about two movies. The first one is The Whale. I just, at the time that it came out, I just didn't get my crap together to be able to do a full review of it. I, I, my, if you want a full review of it, I can do that more than I'm going to do here. I can say for my part, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was more interesting than a lot of stuff that's been coming out from Hollywood lately. Um, I feel that they did a fairly accurate portrayal of what a 600 pound person's life would be. How do I know that? Well, I've seen my 600 pound life. I think Brendan Fraser did a great job. Um, I enjoyed him in the Mummy movies. I can't say that I'm a huge fan of him because that's really the only thing I know him from is the, the Mummy movies. I know he was in a bunch of other movies. Um, and then I know that he disappeared off the scene. So I think this was a great return. I think he did a great job with the movie. And I don't really care about the fat suit. I think they had to do that because seriously, show me some 600 pound actors just waiting to get a role in Hollywood. I'll wait. Even Ethan Supley, I think that's his last name, Supley. He lost a ton of weight. You know, so they're either not existing or they've lost weight. So it is what it is, you know, and like in Thor, he had to wear a fat suit because you're not going to tell Chris Hemsworth that he's going to have to gain like 50 pounds. I mean, maybe he would have done it. I don't know, but I think that he's a little more health conscious than that and probably wouldn't have chosen to do that. And the movie that we're here to talk about is a movie called Piggy. I believe it is in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. I have to watch the subtitles. Um, so I don't know any dialects. It could be from Spain. It could be from Mexico. I don't know. I didn't do the research. Sue me. <laughs> but I would think Fat Acceptance would be all up on this movie because it has gratuitous scenes of this lady, the main actress, Laura Gallen. I think is her name, Galan, Galan, Galen, I don't know how to say it. Um, it has gratuitous scenes of her in her bikini. So lots and lots of obese girl in bikini. Um, it was also, the movie was written and directed by Carlotta Parada. I don't know how to say the name. I'll put it on the screen. You guys can correct me in the comments and call me an idiot. But anyway, so, the movie is basically about a teenage girl who is ruthlessly tormented by t other teenage girls in the town that she lives in and then something bad happens to them. And she's a witness. Spoilers coming after this point. So go watch the movie and come back if you want to. So, as I said, she's a teenage girl ruthlessly tormented by two teenage girls in her town. She is the, the uh, daughter of the butcher and her father's fat, her brother's fat, she's fat, her mom's not, but they kind of allude to she's fat because while well, she eats really well <laughs> in the town. So um, it is summertime and she wants to go to the pool, but she wants to get there by herself uh, because she's afraid that these two, two usually teenage girls are gonna be there and are gonna torment her. I say two because there's actually a third one. We'll get into her. So our, our heroine, our main actress, Laura, goes to the pool by herself. She, you know, she's got her pool accoutrement, a towel, a shirt, her phone, and shoes. And so she's swimming around enjoying herself. Now, this is a horror movie. So she swims past a corpse of somebody who's been murdered because there's been a rash of murders in her town. And she doesn't see it, but we as the, the viewer see it, that we know potentially the killer is there. And is he gonna get her? Who knows? Well, apparently these three teenage girls also wanted to go to the pool. And it must be early morning or something like that because there's no, literally there's no one else there. So, except potentially the killer. And then the three teenage girls show up and they see 
are, you know, Laura swimming around in the pool and they decide to be bitches and they take her towel and her phone and her shirt or whatever she was wearing. And you think for a brief moment that the third girl is going to either stand up for her or like place her towel somewhere, you know, that she can find it. But at the last moment, that girl decides to continue on with the teasing her and tormenting her with the other two girls and doesn't. So they run off with her towel, her shirt, and her phone. So then you have lots and lots of scenes of her walking. And this is where I think fat acceptance would be all up on that because lots of girl in bikini walking. <laughs> in fact, she walked so much in this movie, my feet hurt. And she comes upon a van and doesn't think too much of it until you see a hand come up in the, you know, the van and it's her peers, that her tormentors, you know, screaming for help because they have been kidnapped. Now you see the kidnapper getting into the van and he looks at Laura and she looks back at him and there's a moment of terror because she knows something bad's happening here. And you, you don't know what's gonna happen, you know, they, they play it out beautifully. They pause it where it's like, okay, is he gonna go get her? You know, what's gonna happen here? And he just kind of reaches in the truck and pulls out a towel, drops it on the ground, and then leaves. So in that moment, a deal has been made that she's not gonna report him. He's gonna get even for her for all the torment. Oh, and he's also a chubby guy, by the way. And he leaves her a towel. So she picks up the towel conveniently. It is not her towel, though. It is one of the other girls, obviously. So she walks home and in you know that night she she starts you know through that night in the successive days she starts kind of having you know dreams about oh my gosh you know what's going to happen to these people because she's not a bad person she's just been tormented so she kind of has this feeling of you know i want to see them get their just desserts for being assholes to me and oh my gosh they're, I don't want them to be killed or hurt, but they, I also want them to get their just desserts. But she has to find her phone. So she she takes her brother's phone and uses the, you know, that feature on pretty much all phones now where you can locate your phone. Well, in the course of that, she finds the killer and they have this, this moment in the movie. This movie is just so... I feel like it's so amazing because it expresses so much without necessarily the dialogue, you know, because I have to, had to read it. But there's a moment where you're looking, they're looking at each other and it's almost like this kismet, you know, where they kind of develop feelings for each other even in like this moment. It's really quite interesting to see. She gets her phone back, goes home, but she's still kind of starting to have this problem where it's like, oh, what's gonna happen? I should turn him in because I know what happened. And you also find out that the third girl was her best friend at one point. So the betrayal is even more deep because her best friend turned against her and started tormenting her with the, the, these other two girls. So you do find later that, yes, they did have Kismet and the killer shows up at her house and goes after her father and brother. It doesn't really say what happens to dad. You can choose to believe what you want, whether he passes away or you know, is killed or if he survives is just severely injured. But then she goes off with the killer it, you know, the, she's still kind of, I'm a victim, but I like this guy and you don't know if he's like, I like her or I'm going to kill her because she knows too much. So they go where he has the other girls situated and you find, here's the spoilers, sorry. You find that really what's happening is that he wants her to come be a murderer with him, Bonnie Clyde situation, Bonnie and Clyde situation. And so she sees her peers strung up and they, you know, they start asking her for help. 
and the police are coming so it's very tense and you're not sure what she's gonna do because he basically kind of just shoves a shotgun in her hands and is like okay do what you gotta do so she has a choice to either kill her peers who tormented now remember these girls were assholes to her and tormented the fuck out of her or kill the killer because you don't know is he gonna kill her you you get the idea that maybe he's he's not gonna kill her if she does what she's supposed to so you don't know the way they shoot the movie you don't know initially which side she chooses because you see her take aim and shoot the gun and you think that she has murdered these girls well you find out in the course of you know movie she didn't actually kill the girls she ends up shooting the killer and freeing the girls and there you go but the movie was beautifully shot especially with you know having to read the dialogue the actors were amazing you know, portraying these different emotions. And I highly recommend seeing this movie. And like I said, I figured Fat Acceptance would be all up on this movie because it's, you know, potentially about vengeance. It's gratuitous girl in bikini. You know, it, it just was a beautifully done movie. And with that, friends, hopefully you enjoyed my movie review. Hopefully you go and watch the movie if you are somebody who does foreign films and subtitles and air hugs guys i will see you in the next video i am out